Hello. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Janine and this is my floss tube number 18 where I talk about cross stitch mostly and whatever else comes to mind. It's actually a little bit of a change this week. I'm filming this on Friday evening because we have a an appliance service appointment Saturday morning. So I wanted to be able to do this without stopping to talk about the stove. <laughs> but you will see me Saturday morning when this gets posted. So thank you in advance for joining me. Lovely to have you here. All right, launching right in. Stitching in action, the very first thing. This week or this time, I have a version of Greyhound Year stitched by Cheryl, and she is intending it as a gift for her cousin, I believe, and his wife who rescue greyhounds, and she's modified it to be seasonal rather than monthly. The original chart is designed with one greyhound for every month of the year, and she's made it into seasons. I think that's so beautiful. Well done. So that's up on the Stitching in Action page on the website. Thank you for sharing that, Cheryl. And uh, yeah, really nice to see. I think your cousin will really enjoy it. All right, next, what I'm stitching. As seems to be usual right now, I haven't had a ton of personal stitching, but I got some in, and I've been working on the Pandemic Sampler from Sarsi Girl. I really am loving this. This is on a piece of 40 count x Designs linen, and I'll put all the info in the notes. But I've actually finished the first page officially, so all this is done. I've worked well into the house, and I'm loving the colors. Let's see if I can get it. A little bit better view of the gray blues and it's a little tricky to see right now but anyway it's coming out so nicely i'm very happy with it and so that's the bit of personal stitching i've been able to do once i get below the house you can see there's a little fox there and i'm going to modify that to be a dachshund and then i've got some other modifications as well so get through the house and then get back to more of the fun stuff so it's been a really fun stitch so far and i know several other people are stitching it at the same time so i hope you're enjoying it as much as i am all right on to stash we're kind of rolling through this week maybe i'm just extra excited because it's friday evening and not saturday morning when i'm drinking coffee and trying to wake up enough <laughs> to do this properly all right so i have two new models to show this time and both of these are going to be at the needlework expo the first one is called the gentle rain and it was inspired by probably living in the desert and how much i miss just the the lovely drippy atmospheric foggy rain that we used to have in oregon that they're still having presumably without me so uh yeah without further ado for spring here we go let's see if i can get more of this onto the thing so we've got lots of winter uh, sorry, spring things here some lovely flowers i've got a, a heron or an egret these little ones here are inspired by a yellow-billed cuckoo which is sometimes called a rainbird because they sing when it's hot weather often right before a storm got a little raccoon here and a squirrel some loosely designed dogwood and magnolia trees obviously a lady walking her dog and some robins up top how sweet the music of the rain it's a little bit tricky to see the light blues in this one and in the center the main motif is this sort of quasi giant bird bath in the bottom layer here i have a female and a male duck and two ducklings and in the top a swan and two little cygnets See if we can get closer. Also, on that big bird bath in the center, you can sort of see a design. There is actually a very specific design charted here, and I, I let the model stitcher know I wasn't sure, so she stitched it up, and I decided I really liked the way it looked, where you can't see the design very well, but I put notes in the chart and um, a little close up of what the design looks like in a lighter color. So you can decide if you want that to show. I thought it looked a little bit like a kind of mildewy old bird bath, the way ours always get to looking with aged stone on it. But if you wanted to show it up a little bit more, you could just swap that. Let's see if I can get any view of the design that's in there. It's a little bit hard to see. But anyway, I had a lot of fun with that one. This one is done on 40 count bittersweet linen from Lakeside, which is a little bit pink. 
lakeside linens like so many are a little bit hard to come by right now and so i had a little bit of a, a rummage through my stash the closest i could come was wild honey from legacy linens which was actually very close it's slightly less pink than this one but your lns would be able to point you towards a great substitute if you don't have one already in mind or if you didn't want to switch to a different color altogether the only thing that i was worried about Initially, I was going to do it with a gray, but I just couldn't get these blues and so many of the grays to stand out against it. So I went with a soft, springy pink. So the, here's this one, the Gentle Rain, again, coming to the Needlework Expo. And thank you to Chris Canada for stitching this one for me. Really appreciate it. She did a great job. Next one up is called Wildflowers. And this one came about when I was, well, in a roundabout way. I was looking up prairie wildflowers for another project and then I wandered down this path. And so, here we go here. The verse comes from a Canadian poet and that information is on the chart, but I've got this little motif on the bottom with the central bee skep and then the alternating bees and flowers around it. Let's see if I can get a little closer view there. But it's a very loose meandering border, lots of different wildflowers in the little verse and all DMC. I love the frame that they put it in. This one was stitched up by Lori and framed by Acorns and Threads as was the previous one. Lori from Acorns and Threads did the model stitching for me as well. So it's a really fun anticipating spring. You can tell I'm really ready for spring <laughs> on this one. So this this whole floss tube I think is going to be about anticipating the spring and this is stitched on 40 count mallow linen from Zweigart, so it's not an over dyed. It'd be very easy probably for your shops to get a hold of, but also to get a substitution of if you wanted to do that. So there's that one. Both of those are again coming to the Needlework Expo, the digital quasi market that we're doing here in a couple of weeks coming up. And I just wanted to stop and say a word about local businesses, small local businesses. Obviously, you know your shops, your, your local brick and mortar shops, your local online shops. Those are all small businesses and they're working so hard along with all the people who make thread and fabric working, working themselves out in this craft that we love. But I wanted to let you know that in addition to, of course, my small business, those are being printed by another small business here, Registered Inc in Reno and uh, they do a great job. They let me take the models in and they spend time with the model so they can make sure the print is matching the model as much as possible. And I have another local business, a local photographer who comes and takes the photographs for me when I'm, when I'm not running too late. So a lot of small local businesses are benefiting from your support as I'm sure they are within your own community as well. So on behalf of so many of us, thank you. And thank you again taking the time to join me and thank you Pilsner. I'm actually going to move you because you're sitting on my notes. So let me go sit maybe down there. That'd be nice. All right. Moving on the world around today, we've got, I let Andres pick it this time and he chose coyotes and I've got some great pictures from Nancy, the local photographer. It's another local business and her links will be in the show notes. I actually really love coyotes. I know for some people they're not a favorite, but I've always found them amazing. They're clever, they're adaptable, they work well together. And uh, where we live right now, we have a lot of them very close to us. In fact, I think the first summer after we moved here, there was a den right next to the walking path. And so there were about eight coyote pups that would be rolling around, you know, until we were getting too close and their mother would call them back. So it was really fun to see those also we get to see a lot of what they're eating <laughs> in the course of the walking paths. And our dogs are fascinated with their scent. We'll, we'll often walk down the path one way, especially in the very early morning. And then while we're gone, they'll have come up through the marshy area and left wet paw prints across the path. And when we come back and the prints are still wet, the dogs will just be, oh, this smells so interesting. You can see we have the Pilsner show in the background, but I think trying to stop him would be more disruptive than just letting him carry on. So anyway, on about coyotes, there's another thing I really enjoy about them. And because of where we live, about a block away at night, literally one house over and across the street, 
is the big park and they gather there in the evening. So when our windows are open at night, which is a lot of the time here in Nevada, you can hear them singing and it's just, it's amazing. And especially now it's a little bit special that they get to gather together and sing with each other or just howl with each other if they want to. I think I would really love to get together with my friends and just rub shoulders and sing and maybe howl and <laughs> do all the things that we haven't been able to do. So the coyotes are carrying on without us, but uh, yeah, just another interesting animal we get to see here in Northern Nevada and probably for a lot of you where you live as well, because I know they're, they're very good at surviving in a lot of different environments. So a lot of you who are watching this may also see coyotes where you live. All right. Questions from viewers. I actually didn't have any questions this week, so I'm going to pose one to you and it leads into my best thing. The question that I have is what other hobbies or interests do you have? I'd love to hear from you on that. And then the lead in is because of the best thing this week I received from Tara. I need to find a way to really show these, but these beautiful, beautiful examples of tatting. I'm not doing a very good job. Here's a bigger, looks like a big, oh, that's better than the paper. Big blue snowflake here, and here's this slightly smaller dark blue snowflake. Those are so pretty. I've never actually seen tatting, so it was really sweet of Terry to share those with me. She put string in so that I could hang them, but unfortunately Rye is obsessed with string, among other things. And so I can't hang them up until she gets a little bit older and less inclined to climb up a wall and pull them down. So I'm going to put them in the drawer of things that I use to take model photographs with. And so I'm sure the models for next winter will include these beautiful tatted snowflakes. So that's what I wanted to know for all of you. What other things do you enjoy doing with your free time? What other crafts do you pursue? What other hobbies do you have? I'd, I'd love to hear from you. All right. We're wrapping this up pretty quickly, aren't we? Yes, I talked so much last time, I still talk to myself out. On to the giveaway. Last week, the giveaway chart was Sarah Barker, 1840 from Needlework Press. That's this one here. And to win it, you had to leave a comment with the word flower in it. So many of you had very creative flower comments. Thank you. And the winner is Emily Wells from Melbourne, Australia. And we had talked a little bit about the granular weather in Reno. She mentioned the weather in Melbourne, which is notoriously changeable no matter what. And that is definitely something I've heard about Melbourne. I've also heard it's beautiful. I'd love to go sometime when, when we're allowed to travel again, but that'll be something to look forward to for now. So congratulations, Emily, if you can reach out to me and let me know your address. I will get this headed your way. I don't know how long it will take, but we'll get it on the way and hopefully it'll arrive before too much longer. This week, all right, I have, obviously I'm, I'm just spring obsessed. So I have this beautiful piece of 40 count linen. This is from x Designs and it's called Full Bloom. I don't know if it's still available. I think I bought it a year or two ago, but it's a big piece. So it's actually this big folded over. And what I would like to do is something similar to what I did with the Hyperion linen a couple of floss tubes ago, which is essentially split it with you. So I'll give you half of it and you can use it to stitch something fun. I thought it would look really great with those, those rabbits um, from Steph Lindy Stitches. Those are so cute. It would look really, really good on here. So if you want to win this half of this fabulous piece of linen from X2 Designs, leave me in the comments something using the word purple very creative this week so anything to use the word purple and i will draw someone for next time that is it for me i have a couple of minor announcements the website is finally starting to see the changes that i've been trying to put into action for a number of weeks now and so some of the free patterns are up in a new section and some of them are still yet to come the only other thing is I have one more new design to showcase for next time, and it's for a series you may have heard of called The Moo the Merrier. The idea being, being that a bunch of designers picked a cow and have designed a cow. So that'll be my free chart for shops attending the Needlework Expo and that they get along with their order. So I'll talk about that next time. I've got Pilsner encroaching on me again, so it's probably a good time to wind up. 
he probably wants to start watching the puppy video. So thank you all so much for joining me. I'm going to take up a little more of Pilsner's time here and just say it was, it was very hard for me to start a floss tube. It was very intimidating. I'm not great at talking to people face to face. And so doing it without even seeing their faces is a little bit harder, but it has been such a wonderful thing, especially over this past year to be able to put on my, you know, a nice wig and a, a regular shirt. That's not just my grungy old work t-shirt. And, uh, even if today it's just a slightly nicer t-shirt, but sit down and really spend some time and get to know you. And I just can't tell you enough what it's meant to me that so many of you have chosen to share part of your Saturdays with me and reach out and talk to me a little bit about what's going on with you. And it's been lovely to hear from all of you. So thank you all so much. I hope you have a lovely weekend. I hope for those of you where spring is actually starting and not just a matter of wishful thinking that you get to enjoy some of that. And I will see you again in two weeks. Thank you. Goodbye.